Good afternoon. I am your moderator today for What's This About a Social Media Presence? Uh, my name is Morgan Hazelwood. I'm a blogger, a vlogger, and a querying writer. So, um, and I'm running social media for Balticon as of three, six weeks ago. So, Joshua, did you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Joshua Bilmes. I am the head of the Jabberwocky Literary Agency, which I um, founded 26 years ago. I represent authors like Brandon Sanderson. Um, talking a lot this year about Nick Martell, whose Kingdom of Liars right there is a great debut fantasy. Um, and I have Twitter, and that is what I do on social media. Mike? I'm Mike Luoma. I'm a science fiction writer, a podcaster, and an audiobook narrator. And I just released my brand new book, The Star Seeds of Earth. And you can find out more about my stuff at glowinthedarkradio.com or mikeluoma.com. And I'm primarily on Twitter and Facebook. So. T? All right. I'm T. Morris. A lot of people know me for the Ministry of Peculiar Occurrences series, which does have a companion podcast with it. Uh, it was also a, a Parsec Award winner for Best uh, Anthology Podcast back in 2012. But what a lot of people know me for is being the author of Podcasting for Dummies. Got them all here. Twitch for <laughs> Dummies. <laughs> and a whopping two weeks old Discord for Dummies. And, and um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and really, I should just, instead of saying where I am on social media, let me say where I'm not. I'm not on Snapchat because I tried it. And I'm like, okay, I'm out. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Um, I'm not on TikTok because I, Facebook already knows where I am. I don't need China to know where I am too. Um, apart from that, that you can find me pretty much everywhere online. Same. So, <laughs> I, I have an addiction. Virtual Balticon hasn't helped. So <laughs> social media, we're all told to be out there establishing ourselves and marketing ourselves and our work. What is the number one thing that writers need to know about social media? And does your advice and podcasters and uh, Twitchers, etc., cetera, um, and does it differ between people who already have stuff out there versus people who are just trying to establish themselves? Um, let's start with Mike this time. Oh, I, I think you have to be authentic. Um, I, I've never actually followed any quote unquote good advice. So I've been Mr. Bad Example. Um, I like to talk politics. I like to talk religion. I like to talk all the things that you're not supposed to talk about or stay away from, but I've always felt like you have to be authentic and you have to be yourself. And maybe it's going to cost you sales or maybe it won't get you as far as you might otherwise. But I, I, my advice would be be authentic, be yourself. And don't just be a huckster. Don't just be putting your stuff out and, and trying to get it in front of people. I found that when I started to get into social media, because I'm old and kind of came up as I was getting older, is uh, I, I came from the world of radio, and a lot of it is relating the way you would over the radio, because you're just you're, you're you're informing people, and and whether or not you're you're constantly bombarding them with ads, they're not going to pay attention to you. So don't don't be just telling them about your next book. But, you know, maybe share this really cool science article about the fact there might be a black hole the size of your fist in the Kuiper belt. Um, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's being a complete person online instead of just a writer hucking, huckstering stuff, you know. Okay, T. What Mike says is, uh, is, is right on point. Uh, you know, you'll hear people say, don't ever talk about politics. Don't ever talk about religion. Don't ever talk about you know, your, your, your personal passionate subjects, stay focused on your work and stay focused on the book. I guarantee you the, the, the amount of books that Mike has sold doubles the amount of books that one guy who is constantly giving links on his, on his book. I mean, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I, I, I think the record stands. There was one account that had literally 15 tweets Every one of them, same tweet going back to their book, back to their book, back to their book. Uh, if you, it, it's, it's a bit like when you walk into, 
you walk into an actual room you remember how it was to actually go to a con and you know be around people and you know hugs and things like that don't worry we're gonna get back to that but here's the thing the um if i immediately came in and started selling my book uh you you would be like okay and you wouldn't have two words for me after that now if i came into a room we're all chit-chatting away and then I suddenly did my impersonation of the, you know, I'm waiting to send out the checks because I want to have my names on them. You're going to be like, I want to know what this guy writes. And, and, and that, that is what Mike means by being authentic. Now, does that mean you, you uh, do not promote your books? Of course not. All of us do it. Whether it's Brandon Sanderson on, on Twitter, whether it's Mike, whether it is uh, Chuck Windig, all of these people have, uh, even Neil Gaiman, when Ga I mean, come on, Neil freaking Gaiman. And he's like, hey, my new book's out. Of course he's going to talk about that. So that's okay. It's, it's finding that, that balance. You've got to find that balance between, between, um, uh, be, be, between being a salesperson and being, being you. And, just because, and, and the, other, the, other, uh, the, the other piece of advice I would give is just because you are putting yourself out there does not mean you have to put all of yourself out there. There's stuff you should keep close to the vest. There's nothing wrong with that. Sure and, and that and and that's that's been one of the biggest that's been one of the biggest perils I've seen. Not not so much from uh, social media, but a lot from people who are new to podcasting and new to and new to streaming. Because suddenly they, they find themselves as a public figure and they feel like they have the need to share everything. And the answer is no, you don't. Keep, okay. Keep personal stuff personal. Yeah. Joshua? Yeah, I mean, I don't have too much to add really to that. It's like practically I can go home because everything has been said. So, um, well, um, I, I, I would add, um, you know, I, I personally um, don't enjoy so much um, going on Twitter with people who want to be very depressing a lot of the time nobody's buying my book or my life is sucky. And that's kind of, um, you know, I think you can do the same thing on social media as you can do an actual social, like somebody asks you, how's it going? And you want to uh, take that too literally and tell them about how miserable your life is. Um, that, you know, I'm not a big fan of that. And I think it's kind of been hinted at by what uh, uh, the first two panelists have said, but I think one of the other most important things about social media to say directly is do what you like to do. There's nothing worse than somebody who has a Twitter account or a Facebook account because they've been told, the publishers told them you need to do this, but they're not interested in actually maintaining it in an interesting or, 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 or even any way. Don't do it. If that's your level of interest, you're better off stepping back and abstaining from it. Uh, I just wanted to jump in here real quick. Uh, while we are somewhat paying attention to the chat, we do ask that all Q&A go into the Q&A window and they will be addressed at the second half of the panel. So um, Joshua, did you have any specific thoughts on the difference between what published and unpublished writers should be doing? I mean, not really. I mean, you're still trying to talk about your work. Um, and you might be able to build a following talking about the travails of trying to become a published writer. Um, you know, we'll see how things happen as books get closer to publication. But, um, you know, I've, I've sold some first novels and those authors are over, you know, just in the past few weeks. And those authors are going to have to navigate that thing where, you know, come the, the end of 2021 and the books are being published, that, yeah, you're going to have to pivot a, 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 pivot a bit toward, toward that rather than just doing what you like to do for your friends or whatever. 
So uh, going back to what Mike and T said about being authentic, um, and T said you have to curate to some degree. Do you think that social media is, this, this might be out of your wheelhouse, but different for women and people of minority groups? Is it harder for them to be political or opinionated in um, more, more, less popular ways? Do you think it's safe? I hope not. I mean, I, I like to follow people who are opinionated. So <laughs> those are the people I'm, I'm following and appreciate. I, I feel, I feel so, so driven to go, well, actually, Morgan, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I, 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 would, I, I would actually echo what Mike is saying. Um, I enjoy, like, um, one person in particular that came to mind when you said that, Morgan, was Delilah S. Dawson. And why she gets so much hate, I really believe is because, um, and I've had, I've had the pleasure of having dinner with Delilah, having drinks with Delilah. And let me tell you something, that girl's got something on her mind. She gonna tell to you. <laughs> and, and, and I love her. I love that about her. Um, just as a little insight on her as well. Every, we, we, uh, Pip and I have this little, this little tiki that we take with us everywhere called Lucky Tiki. And every time we tell somebody to pose with it, they're always smiling with it. And the, Delilah's always trying to kill it. She's trying to dunk it in it. She's, tr she's taking a knife to its throat. She's putting it in, in her drink. And I'm sitting there going, wow, this, this is Delilah in a nutshell. And, and um, is there, I, I honestly think that, that yes, it, it can be tougher. And speaking as man, I can only imagine but I can tell you this, I have been mansplained before. Um, and, and I think it was, I've been mansplained to by somebody 20 years, my junior. And it was about social media. And it was about how it didn't work. And I'm sitting, I'm standing here going, so this is what it feels like to be mansplained to. I get it. <laughs> I totally effing get it. I, I, I got woke. Um, I, I, I would say, I would say, is it tougher? Yes. But I still think it is just as important to be that genuine. Um, uh, along, yeah. Alongside Delilah, I would also put Merle Lafferty. I would also put um, uh, 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 Kate, uh, oh, um, the, the artist formerly known as Karina Cooper. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I've worked with some really talented, talented women and they've told me about some of the stuff that they, that they, that they dealt with in social media and it's rough. It's really rough. Joshua, any thoughts? Um, uh, if you don't, uh, you, you, you need to really ask yourself about everything you tweet. Um, even for me, um, you know, um, like I have my own personal opinions and I also have to decide which of those can be shared by my business, which employs people, all of whom are a generation younger than me. Um, so what are some of the things that are going to cross that gap? And what are some of those things that are uh, me and shouldn't be? Um, and we have to think about it. And if I decide to tweet something that might be controversial, then I have to be prepared for the fact to take some of what the Twitterverse will do for that. Um, happily, like my account isn't one that people go to looking for things to really dump on. And I think that that's one of the biggest differences is there are definitely people whose opinions are going to be a lot more closely scrutinized. <clears throat> so um, let's, let's back up a little and just talk about what is your favorite platform and why? Uh, maybe T wants to go first? Maybe T wants to think about it. I think I'll go first. Like Joshua already I'm already already. Yeah, yeah, I'll let um, Joshua go first. <laughs> I, I have... Um, it's Facebook, isn't it? So, so, so maybe this has to do with my mother, who sent out so many greeting cards that she could get them wholesale. Um, and I'm not joking about that. But I've always thought that um, 
that there's something real about doing something social that actually involves like an effort, sending a greeting card, keeping actually in touch by like phoning people. And I've never liked Facebook, which has always seemed to me to be the exact opposite of that. All about sharing that doesn't actually involve a lot of effort. Um, and you can find out more that way because it's fed to you and you don't have to work so hard, but there's something about it that's just always struck me as false. And in exchange for that, the amount of information that you need to give to feed the Facebook beast is quite substantial. I mean, quite, quite substantial, even without getting into, you know, some of the friend sharing and things that shouldn't be happening. The amount that should has always struck me as a very high price. Um, Twitter, I've just always loved because I feel like I am in more control over what I am sharing. And I just think it's like fun in a way. And, but the biggest thing is just, I feel like I can feed Twitter while being a lot more selective about what I choose to do for feeding it. Um, hence, just Twitter for me. And the interesting thing about Facebook is nobody in the office has ever just dragged me down and said, Joshua, Jabberwocky <clears throat> has to have a Facebook page. We know the way you feel about it, but the agency needs a Facebook account. Nobody has ever kind of had that come to Jesus conversation with me. Okay, so Mike, did you want to go next or is T done thinking? <laughs> I, 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 let, let Mike go next. I, my, I have a, what I call a multi-tiered answer, but I promise to keep it brief. My, mine's only like a double really? tier. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I like Twitter better, but I am on Facebook more and use Facebook more because that's where people are. Um, and you got to go where people are. And I use Instagram a little bit, but I'm not a person who loves photography or taking a lot of pictures, so it doesn't fit me that well. So I find myself mostly on Facebook, but it's more by default because that's where the people are rather than that I like it. I kind of like Twitter better myself. Okay. So Morgan, we're ready. When you said when you said you were surprised, were you surprised that it was a multi-tiered answer or that I would keep it brief? I need to know this. I need, <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. So um if I, were, if I were to pick a, a favorite platform, it's the one that I, uh, it's the one that I, I wrote this book on, Twitch. The one on and, your shirt? And the one on my shirt, exactly. <laughs> represent. Um, I have, yeah, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, have, I have fallen in love with Twitch mainly on, on a number of levels, but the main reason I enjoy it so much is that it helps me feed other platforms. Um, the, the, the thing that's great about Twitch is that I, I'm now... I started, and I mentioned this last night, I started playing video games because that's where a lot of people start with Twitch. But <clears throat> I am now doing cooking streams on Twitch. I am now um, podcast, I'm, I'm filming all of, my, uh, all of my podcast recording sessions on Twitch. And this is, where, this is where the magic I think of streaming happens. I can go on ahead because when I first pitched it to Pip that I wanted to stream the shared desk, she was like, I'm not sure if I'm into it. She's really into it now. And what's great about it is that we're working live. We're creating original content that doesn't make it into the podcast that usually gets chopped out. And then on top of all that, if something fails in the, in the recording process, I have a backup. I already have an automatic backup. So I can go ahead and feed that in there. And then, uh, so, so, so streaming has really fallen into the podcasting uh, podcasting workflow very easily. And that's going to be featured in the fourth edition that Chuck Tomasi and I are working on right now. <laughs> on top of that, I'm also now on Discord. And when I go live, 
automatically content goes live on Discord saying T is now live. And then I go onto Instagram and I take a selfie of me getting ready. It can be with me and my cat. It could be uh, me in front, of the, in front of the terminal. And people are, and I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm about to go live. And then I go onto Twitter because, uh, and Joshua, that yeah. kind of Jesus talk is never going to happen for you because I have asked many, many streamers, why don't you promote on Facebook? And they go, because the audience isn't there. So, so I promote every, I promote on Twitter. I promote on Twitch. I promote on, on, on discord, on Instagram. I do. N I rarely post something on Facebook that I'm live because that all isn't there. I find. F and that's what, but that's what I enjoy. You just the most. broke up. Could you repeat that last sentence? Um, because the audience, uh, I rarely post on Facebook that I'm going live because my audience isn't there. And, and I really, I really do believe, uh, Twitch is my, has become my favorite platform because of not just the platform itself, but how it helps me propagate all my other platforms. Okay. Well, I'll have to talk to the people in my office about Twitch, I guess. And Joshua, I can recommend a book <laughs> and my services are, are available to you. I could, I could, I would be more than happy to have that conversation with you. More than happy. Uh, so uh, my next question was gonna be, um, they, they say maybe, be where your readers are may, and your audiences rather than where you prefer. Um, but were there any other thoughts y'all wanted because you kind of mostly covered that? I would say, I, I, I'll, I'll kick it off. I'll say uh, that your audience is, is, is wide and varied. And the same audience you'll have, the audience you'll have on Facebook will not necessarily be the same audience you'll have on Twitter. Yeah. And that audience may not, audience may not be listening to your pod um it's you know you'll hear you'll hear some authors go you got to be on all the platforms you hear some agents say you got to be on all the platforms and to me that's that's like okay but but when do i have to find your your maximum velocity your, your terminal velocity and go okay i can manage this many and that's it and i've heard and, I was just going to say, I've heard to reserve your name so at least nobody's putting out content that you wouldn't support under your name on other medias. Well, that goes back to branding. Right. That goes to branding. Like if somebody was tweeting as T. Morris on, on, uh, on Twitter, uh, as, as an example, I'd be like, well, that's not me. And they go, but it's your name. And I go, yeah, but if you follow me on Twitter and you follow me on Twitch and you follow me there, you know I'm the T. Monster. So... You know, it's, it's like, are you going to listen to the Neil Gaiman one or the Neil himself Twitter, uh, Twitter handle? And that's, that, that goes back to branding. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to jump in? Okay. So I know a lot of people are flippant or dismissive of different platforms for various reasons, either because of what they've heard about it or because of bad experiences. So what is your advice for avoiding or minimizing the more toxic side of whichever social media platform you prefer? I'd say um, block people. Don't be afraid to block people. It's, you know, you're, you're creating a space. Toxicity shouldn't be welcome. If somebody comes at you, block them. That's why block is there. If there's somebody you know and you feel some sort of empathy towards them, you can snooze them for a while or whatever. But I'd say, don't be afraid to just block people because you've got to protect yourself and you've got to protect your space. Right. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm kind of lucky, like so far at least, neither mine nor the Jabberwocky Twitter feeds have a lot of that. But yes, um, locking people is something that you can do. Um, and we even have one client who just um, tweeted literally dozens or scores of times a day. And I ended up locking the client, which I don't like to do. But I'm like, I don't have time for this many tweets in my life. <laughs> um, and a lot of the ones we really needed would end up being retweeted by somebody else we followed and would come to our attention anyway. But, um, uh, you know, yeah, blocking people is a, is a good way of 
taking control of what you see in your timeline. Okay. Or, or I should say muting, muting in that instance is what we were doing. Sorry about that. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, so muting as well as blocking. Um, Does anybody here use like Twitter lists or something to uh, streamline the feed of what you see? No. I recommend them if you do want to like look at a Twitter list of just agents you're interested in or um, people whose advice you really like if you, because it goes so fast, so. I, I, instead, I use, um, I use notifications. And, yeah. uh, and, and um, there are some people that I really wanna hear from, whether it's an agent, whether it's a, whether it's a, a, a specific writer, even a celebrity, um, a, 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 Twitch, uh, a Twitch account. And I, I go ahead and I notify, uh, I, I, ha I have enabled notifications. And sometimes you have to manage that. It's no different than lists. You yeah. got you got to you got to manage that, and you go well. You know, maybe I don't want all the notifications here, <laughs> but uh, but but it's easy. But that that's the thing I've noticed about uh, about Twitter. Um, I was an early adopter in 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 two thousand seven, and I've watched it. I've watched it evolve. I've watched it grow. I've seen it fall out of popularity. I've seen it come back in popularity, and 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 the ebbs and flows of Twitter I find fascinating. And and. They have only worked to make their service better. I just wish other platforms, Facebook, would, would really endeavor to, to, to do what Twitter has done over the years. It's not a perfect field by any stretch of the imagination. There's toxicity everywhere. Um, I mean, just to be frank, some of the assets that have listened to my previous podcasts, I'm like, why am I doing this? And then I get those notes like, you know, your podcast got me through a really bad time. And I go, oh, that's why I'm doing this. Okay, never mind. I'm could I ask like a quick question T we're talking about Twitter. So if you had to choose like two or three things that you think have been most helpful to their improvements in the service, what would you say that they are? So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to flex here a bit. Um, I can, I can speak from, from experience because back in, back in 07, I actually wrote a book called all of Twitter. <laughs> And I, and I, 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 um, I, so I had to do a lot of deep dive on what was happening on Twitter back then. Now I can tell you right now, some of the things that have improved it one threads threads on Twitter. Phenomenal. I was like, Oh my God, they got it. They, they, they made it work. I mean, because I, I, I know there was an entire section that talked about on Twitter don't work because everything comes at you in reverse. But when they did that ad thread, I was like, perfection. For people um, who can't fit it in 140 words. 160 characters now. It's now 160. It's, it's yeah. 280, isn't it? I'm sorry, you're right. It's 280. It was originally like 140, 160 characters. And they doubled it. Then they doubled it. Right. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Two um, seconds. I'm going to pop the uh, Virtual Balticon um, panelists Twitter list into the chat. Go ahead. Uh, so so I, would, I would say the threads have been a huge help. Um, being able to, to enable notifications for specific characters, uh, sorry, for, for specific accounts, and then getting that little reminder, hey, there are new tweets from these accounts. Uh, I love that. Um, and then uh, I think the third, the, the third thing about uh, of recent improvements that I really like is, um, is Twitter actually stepping up and, and, uh, and, and trying to do their, their best to stamp out cyberbullying. Um, they, they, they've got a long road ahead. That's the problem though. They've got a long road ahead. Uh, and, and, and when people go, well, Twitter should be smart about this. I, I, I go, uh, point of order. In 2008, these guys were hacked because their password to their server was the word password. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that Mor Morgan, are you having a moment? Are you having a moment? <laughs> In my day job, I'm a software engineer. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, it was password. It was password. It, it was it was, a, it was a younger, innocent time. I'll tell you about it sometime, Morgan. I will. But um, but was I mean, it, was it password with a zero? No. <laughs> Word password. Wow. And and they said 
didn't expect to explode this hard. And it was one of the things that we would get back to. I'm like, dude, and to Morgan, I see, I see your computer software engineer, the time that it happened, I was employed as a cybersecurity, as a, at a cybersecurity firm doing their social media. And I'm like, oh my God, guys. And that was when my boss came to me and said, should we be on Twitter? And I said, don't worry, we're fine, we're fine. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, but so, so I, I do think that they're taking the right steps. I wouldn't, and, and as, as radical as this may sound, one of the biggest cyber bullies that is currently live on Twitter is sitting in one of the most powerful positions in American politics. So that, okay. that actually leads directly into the next question, which is what do you see people doing wrong on social media? <laughs> well, running for president is one thing. Um, <laughs> I, Voting public policy is another, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want to see what not to do, just, just look at our current Cheeto in chief. I mean, I... I, I let's, let's keep it... I know, I know, I know. Okay. It's, it's, I know. I know. Right. Anyway, um, uh, yeah. But but, the, but here but here here's the conundrum, and this is where I see authors making a huge mistake. If we focus just on authors, they see what other people are doing on Twitter, and I'm not. And I, you know what? Let's let's not just let's not, let's just not focus on our on our on our president. Let's also look at some other people like um, like Kanye. Let's look at people like um, like Kanye like Kanye's uh, like Kanye's dear wife. And let's look at some of the other celebrities and what they're doing on Twitter. Um, some people, they, 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 they think, oh, that's the way to get listeners. That's the, or that's the way to get followers. I have to really push it out. I have to really be on the edge. But it's the same thing that I tell people about podcasting. If, for example, if I had Morgan on my, on, on my, on my show, on the shared desk with Pip, and I were to suddenly come up with, so Morgan, do you sleep in the nude? That is a really inappropriate question. If I was Howard Stern, it's an expected question. But if I'm, but I'm not Howard Stern. I'm T. Morris, so I'm not going to ask that. I could think it, but I'm not going to ask it. But as far as, sorry, uh, I had to go there. Uh, but as far as, as far as, as being those celebrities, being Howard Stern, being controversial for controversy's sake, it's a dumb thing to do. And when people push that envelope, it's, I want, I see it happen. I see it happen repeatedly. And I just go, really? That's, that's your strategy? Thank so, you. So, yeah. Okay. I think it's authenticity again. I mean, those celebrities, that's kind of who they are. And, you know, as far as it goes for the guy in the Oval Office, that's who he is. So, um, you know, again, you got to be yourself, but you shouldn't be trying to be somebody else, I think, is, is a good way to look at that. Joshua? Nothing to add. No. Okay. Um, so we've talked about what people are doing wrong on social media. What works best for you? Is there anything you haven't gone over already? Oh, wait. Or I can lead in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure um, what's worked the best. So. Yeah, I, I, I can uh, I can answer that because I just saw that happen. Or actually, it happened to me. Not not me doing it, but it happened to me. So um, I don't know how many of you know this, or how many of you out in the audience know this, but uh, between the end of March and April, I was doing on Twitch a charity stream for an organization called No Kid Hungry. And the, real quick, the, the organization, what they do is that they, they make sure that kids who are reliant on school meals for breakfast, for lunch, for an after school meal or something like that, they get fed during holidays and during Christmas and during, uh, during the summer. And when COVID-19 shut down schools nationwide, these kids didn't know where their next meal was coming from. So I went on ahead and I, I, I launched, a, I, I launched a, a, a charity stream. And I started getting personal tweets from members of No Kid Hungry. And yeah, yeah, yeah. All, the staff were amazing. And it made, me, it made me work harder. Because now, I, I, it wasn't just that I had people watching. I had people from the charity watching. And they were cheering me on. And, um, and, we had, and, and then they came into my stream. 
they came into my stream just to say, hey, T, you're doing a great job. And, j and as a joke, I said, wouldn't it be fun if on the last day of the stream, you guys came into the stream and I guided you through one of the games? Aww. And they pinged me and they said, we'd love to do that. And on the last day of the stream, I had the, I had the, um, the head of the streaming department of No Kid Hungry. I had their community uh, manager and I was shirping the community manager with his boss cheering us both on through the big finale of Destiny 2. And during the finale, we cracked $5,000. And it was just, it was just people just, cheer. it was that, it was engagement. Not just you engaging with other people, but when other places engage with you, suddenly it's not this big organization in you. Suddenly it's just this great big melting pot of people just trying to get to know you. And I, th that, that to me, if you want to know what to do right, engage, engage, engage. It, 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 makes, it makes a world of difference between you then realize there's a real person behind that account. Joshua? I mean, I wish I had any idea on that. You know, I mean, like one of the things that I, 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 I look at is, you know, why do I have X many followers and some other agent has Y followers, whether it's more or less. Um, but would I even have the interest or the time to do some of the things that that those people do. Um, but one of the things I know is that anytime you can get out of your own area and a little into someone else's, which means, as T says, engaging so that your tag shows up in somebody else's feed, is probably not a bad thing. Like it's why I get frustrated when a publisher tells an author, why don't you do a cover reveal for your book on your own website? That isn't going to help anything. The people who follow the author, like they're already the people who follow the author. You need to do that cover reveal on some other website, any other website, so that you're hopefully bringing somebody new into the discussion. Thank you. Mike? I can only talk to personal, like anecdotal experience. I don't have any like quantitative measurements of things, but... Um, you know, just in terms of reaching out and, and seeing stuff come back, like, um, I think Twitter can be more immediate, whereas Facebook is more mediated. So you don't always know that your message is getting out to everybody on Facebook because of all their algorithms and such. Twitter, uh, Twitter does control that to some degree, but not to, I think, the same draconian degree. And I just feel like I get more of a personal response back on Twitter. I got my first response this morning from somebody who had read the book and they were, they were all really, you know, I don't want to read it because it's, it's like humble bragging, but um, it was really cool. And it was just nice to get, and it was on Twitter. So that's, that's where I'm at. So. Okay, let's go to the Q and A. Our first question is from Kelvin Powers. What are some tactics to use social media to be discovered by people who have never heard of you before? Hmm. Um, I would say, um, I would say, I would say instead of being, being someone uh, or, or, be, or being an account about, about you and about your work, be, be, uh, try, try to try to paint with a broad brush. Um, with, uh, with, with the, the steampunk series that my wife and I write together, uh, we actually set up uh, a Books and Brawn account on, on Twitter, and we would actually tweet, tweet as the characters. So we'd have back and forth. Sometimes my wife and I would have back and forth conversations as Eliza Braun and Wellington Books. Um, probably the funniest exchange was when the big, well, the big, the earthquake happened in Northern Virginia. And I immediately went to the Books and Brawn site and I went to the, uh, to the residents of, of Virginia and the, on the Eastern Seaboard of the United States, the Ministry of Peculiar Occurrences would like to apologize. Thank you. 
<laughs> and, and, I, and, we just, and that thing went viral. Um, but the other thing we do, apart from talking about the books and things like that on those accounts, is we also talk about steampunk. And we will, we, we will go out and we will curate and we will put on the Books and Brawn Twitter, on the Books and Brawn Tumblr, and the Books and Brawn uh, Facebook page, or the Ministry of Peculiar Occurrences page, all these steampunk uh, links. So people know if they go to the Ministry of Peculiar Occurrences on Twitter, on Tumblr, on Facebook, they're going to find a resource for steampunk. And, and by, by broadening those circles, people go, wow, these people are, are, these are really good links on steampunk and steampunk events. Who are these people? And then they start digging and then guess, find us. So that's, that's one way of doing it. That's one way of doing it. Any other suggestions? Yeah, I, I, I think it's, well, I don't know. I can only speak to my own approach, really. And that's been kind of providing a, a sort of curated feed of things I think are interesting. So I think, you know, if, if you want to be noticed, you've got you've to be interesting for more than just yourself. And you've got to share interesting material. So maybe it's just a case of being more aware of the interesting material you're coming across and sharing it, too. I, I would also add it's... Um... It, it, it can be a risk to open up yourself in that creative, in that creative vein, because then you, you have the, you have the worry of, okay, am I writing this book by committee? If I start sharing with people, this is what I'm doing, but I've seen that work also on Twitch. There's a guy called the gaming author. And when he doesn't game, he's writing and he writes openly on a Twitch stream. And, and people will sometimes ask, I've not done that myself, but I have edited before. And people will ask me, why, why did you make that choice? And I explain my, my mentality. And, they lo and it, was a, it was a popular stream. And I know I need to do it more often. But example of, of, of capturing, uh, capturing readers and, 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 and really building a career off that is Merle Lafferty. Um, she launched I Should Be Writing over a decade ago. And I, I, was, I remember when it first went online, I said, this is, this is, this is bold. And I thought to myself in the background, in the back of my mind, I was like, well, what is she going to do when she gets published? Because I, I knew Murr and I'm just like, yeah, she, she's going to get published. She got it. She's still doing the podcast. And she says, I'm doing this to keep myself grounded and to keep myself honest. And also now I've got to worry about promotion. I've got to worry about getting word on the book out there, but I should be writing. And to watch that evolution has, has been fascinating. So yeah, that, that's something else to consider too is, it can be a risk when you share your works in progress openly online. But when you, when you are able to parlay that and bring people along for the ride, you're going to, you're going to build a very loyal fan base from that. An another, um, I'm going to interject right here. Thing I've heard is to comment on the people you follow that you get the most out of, because if you get a lot out of them, they're probably the other readers are just like you and you're probably going to connect with them. Don't just post with like a link to your blog or whatever comments on what, you know, you're reading and what you're seeing and be interesting and people might follow you. And the best way to get followers is to follow people and don't just do it like you're spamming for follow backs. Nobody likes them. Nobody. Nobody. Go ahead. Nobody. But then, yeah, and then sometimes, though, I'm reminded of the William Goldman saying, nobody knows anything. Um, <laughs> because I can look at, you know, I can look at some other agencies that have these very, like, kind of staid and boring and very functional Twitter accounts that have 10,000 more followers than Jabberwocky where I really try and interact with clients when they do something interesting and et cetera, you know, try and do that thing. But, you know, but, but, but whether we're actually punching over our way because we should really have only yay many Twitter photos, just mostly in science fiction and fantasy, while some other agency is in these other categories or whether we're punching under our weight or, or, or whatever, who, who actually knows at the end of the day? 
which I think also gets back to my thing about doing what you find fun. If I'm not sure what actually works, let's at least do something that we're having fun doing. T, you had a... Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm giving myself one minute. And then uh, we and, don't have much more time. I know, I know we don't. So I'm going to, I'm going to say real quick about analytics. Do not pay attention to the analytics. The analytics are, are, it's, it's, it's a zero sum game because I guarantee you, Joshua, a good portion of those tens of thousands of followers that other agencies have are all bots. The thing about the, it, it's quality, not quantity you want. And when you want success in social media, whether you're doing it for yourself or whether you're doing it for, uh, for, a, for a business or an organization, you're in for the long game. This is, you, you, you've got to have patience. And, and nothing is tougher. I'm speaking from experience. Nothing is tougher when you are streaming to an audience of zero. But everybody starts there. Lupo, Ninja, everybody starts there. And that's what you have to remember. So, yeah, the analytics can be frustrating, but always go with quality, not quantity 10 seconds left go okay let's do some <laughs> rapid fire q a to try to get through them one sentence answers only or one word are newsletters a good way to contact readers yes no go yes yes um, yes, yes. <laughs> okay uh what is the best schedule for your platform and what's your favorite tool can't answer that in one sentence but i will say hootsuite or Sprout Social, or if you can afford it, Radiant 6? I just go um, for it on all of them. <laughs> I, I just like get to Twitter some days when I get to Twitter. So it, it's not a choice thing. It's when I can do it. Um, our, I think the rest of the questions are just going to have to wait for the uh, after panel discussion over on Discord in the hashtag literary writer reader tag I yes, think. and i will be there after the panel i will head out to that chat room so everybody go ahead and give your outro let's start with joshua because he's on the top of my screen um you know i just think it, it it's been a great fun panel um you know so hopefully we've all benefited on it from social media okay uh t uh, real and quick. do you have any books to recommend on <laughs> yeah. social media for someone not, just starting not only, out? Not only do I have books to recommend, but um, I'm actually, I actually launched it this weekend for Balticon uh, 54. You can go to my website, tmorris.com, go to the store, and you can pick up a content creator's bundle, which is all three of these books, 20% off, and I sign them. Nice. Uh, and it's $5 shipping anywhere in the United States. So have at. I'm done. Thank and Morgan, thank you. Thank you very much for this. You were you were thank killing you. it. Mike? I'm Mike Luoma. I'm a science fiction writer, podcaster, and um, narrator and radio guy. And I've just put this out. I was planning on launching it at Balticon this year, but now I'm doing it virtually. So <laughs> the Star Seeds of Earth is my new novel, and you can find me on Facebook and, and Twitter under my own name. So it's just after there.com slash Mike Luoma, but all my stuff is at glowinthedarkradio.com or michaelluoma.com. And I'm going to try to get over to the Discord thing after I make a little pit stop first. And I'm Morgan Hazelwood. I am a blogger, vlogger, social media addict, and querying writer. You can find me at morganhazelwood.com, on YouTube at Morgan Hazelwood, and everywhere as Morgan Hazelwood, except Twitter, where I'm Morgan Huzzlewood, because someone has <laughs> not used the account for over 10 years, ever, with Morgan Hazelwood, and Twitter <laughs> hasn't cleared them out yet. But as soon as they do, I'm switching. Oh. So, and that's me. And that was, um, what's this about a social media presence? Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.